This video will give an introduction to bifurcation diagrams as a way to analyze autonomous equations that have a parameter in them. So in a lot of physical systems, they'll operate via autonomous equations, but the way that you could tweak the system to change how it's going to behave. And this presents itself with an autonomous equation with a parameter. This parameter is what you as the sort of operator could adjust to change how the system functions. So here is basically we have an autonomous equation, but there's an adjustable value in it that can be changed. One main example of this type of system is the idea of population growth, logistic population growth, that has an amount of harvesting. So you're taking some units out of the population at a certain rate, and you want to see how it affects the overall growth rate or development of this population. So if we have that sort of situation, we would have a differential equation that looks like dy dt for y or population, equals the standard logistic model y times the carrying capacity minus y and then we subtract off our harvesting rate alpha. So the idea is that the population grows according to this normal logistic model but we're also removing units from the population at a rate of alpha so this alpha is sort of a rate that's coming out of the population giving us this sort of equation here to model this system. This alpha is the parameter that we can adjust and this would be what's referred to as the variable harvesting rate. In the physical sense, you can imagine that the value of alpha is going to have some effect on the overall growth of this population. Right? If we don't harvest at all, we get some sort of certain growth rate. But if we harvest out way too fast, it's going to kill off the entire population. So this value of alpha changes the overall behavior of this equation. We want to analyze how changing alpha affects the equation, as well as its solutions. And that's what these bifurcation diagrams are trying to answer. So just to find the term that we're looking at here, an autonomous equation with a parameter, this is a differential equation of the following form. dy dt is f sub alpha of y. You could write this as just f of alpha and y, but notationally, we put the alpha in the subscript to denote that's a, a different sort of variable than the y is. The y is the thing that's actually changing here for the population, or whatever y models. The alpha is our adjustable parameter for this equation. So f sub alpha is a function of one variable, meaning f of alpha y is a function of two variables. And it's going to depend on alpha to adjust what's going to happen for this parameter. So here's some examples just of equations that fit this sort of model. Right, you have y times y minus alpha. That is a function of one variable y that has a dependence on the parameter alpha. y squared y squared minus alpha, same idea. And this last one here fits the harvesting model that was discussed on the previous page. Same idea, we just picked now k to be 20. And the basic idea of how this works is we're going to pick values of alpha, and when we pick a value of alpha, we then know how to analyze the equation. Because if I fix alpha, I now only have a function of one variable on the right side, which means this is a standard autonomous equation. We can analyze this using phase lines. So what does that look like? We can just draw different phase lines for each alpha. So if I take the equation y times y minus alpha, and I want to analyze using phase lines, I can just pick values, say minus 2, 0, and 3, and see what I get. So for this first example, I have dy dt is y times y minus negative 2, or y plus 2. The zeros here are at 0 and minus 2. So that's where my equilibrium solutions are. And I can draw a phase line, 0 and minus 2. If I plug in a positive number, I get 1 times 3 is positive. Plug in negative 1, I get negative 1 times 1 is negative. If I plug in negative 3, I get a positive number again. So up, down, up is my phase line there. I can do this for the other values as well. So if I take alpha equals 0, I now get dy dt is just y squared. So I only get y equals 0 as an equilibrium solution. And my phase line has a mark at 0. And this is always positive. And for alpha equals 3, I can do the same thing. y times y minus 3. My equilibrium solutions are at y equals 0 and y equals 3. I can plug in numbers again here. If I plug in 4, it's positive. If I plug in 1, it's negative. If I plug in negative 1, it's positive again. Up, down, and up. And we get this sort of pattern how this function behaves for different values of alpha. One thing to notice here, if you look at the 0 solution, the y equals 0, here it was unstable, here it was semi-stable, and here it became astronomically stable. 
So the stability of the y equals zero solution, which is always there, has changed based on the value of alpha. And that's gonna be the important point here, that there's gonna be potentially values of alpha at which these behaviors change, and these will be called our bifurcation points. This is great and all, but is there a better way to visualize what's actually going on here? And the answer is yes, this is what bifurcation diagrams are meant to do. The idea is basically, I'm gonna draw a graph or an image in two dimensions, where I'm gonna let alpha be the horizontal axis, and y be the vertical axis. And the idea is basically above each value of alpha, I'm gonna put the phase line that corresponds to this equation at that value of alpha. So for the previous equation, I could see the following. I set up my axes. If I look at say minus two over here, I'm gonna want a zero value at zero, a zero value at minus two, and I can put a phase line in between where I mark up, down, and up. At zero, I put just a dot at zero, and I can mark up and up. And then at alpha equals three, draw another phase line. So if I mark up at three, and here I mark up, down, and up. And the idea will be to fill this in for all values of alpha, which if you do it for this equation, you get something that looks like this. And if I let blue indicate upward motion or a positive slope, I would get a blue region up here and down here. And if red indicates negative, this part in here would be shaded in red. So you have the plane in terms of alpha and y divided up and colored based on whether the solution will go up or down at that point. How do you go about drawing these pictures? The main process is I want to figure out where my equilibrium solutions are for any value of alpha. To be able to plot this, you generally want to find these as a function of alpha, if possible. If not, you can just sketch them on the graph as implicit functions, that's fine too. Then I want to look at the function f alpha of y more or less as an actual two variable function here and determine where in the plane it is positive or negative. And because we've already found the solutions, where it's zero, we know that we can just pick basically one point in every chunk of the graph, and that'll tell us where it's positive or negative there. And then you want to draw the graph of the equilibrium solutions on the graph, and then shade the regions where it's going up or down so you know where it's moving in each region. And that gets the idea of how to draw these pictures. Let's draw an example of one of these. That's the example we had before of logistic population growth with harvesting. So I want to figure out where my equilibrium solutions are depending on alpha. So I will set this equal to zero and see what I get. Let's expand out that polynomial there. Uh, we get 20y minus y squared minus alpha equals zero or ultimate by negative sign y squared minus 20y plus alpha equals zero. I want to find values of y where this is zero depending on alpha. So just go right to the quadratic formula here. y is going to equal 20 plus or minus the square root of 20 squared or 400 minus 4 times alpha over 2. This becomes a 10 plus or minus, I can factor a 4 out of there to put a 2 out front, the square root of 100 minus alpha. So I get two solutions here for appropriate values. Right? If alpha is less than 100, I will get two solutions. If alpha is bigger than 100, I get none. And what does this look like? Well, this is basically a parabola. That's what sort of this equation tells us here. But now we get some idea of where it's situated. So let's draw some axes and try to sketch out this graph. So if alpha equals zero, then I get 10 plus or minus square root of 100. So I will get zero and 20 for my two solutions here. I know that when alpha equals 100, I get one solution at 10. So if I mark, say, 100 all the way out here, I'm gonna get one solution here in the middle at 10. And since the parabola, I know that I can draw out the parabola here that goes through these three points with this one at 100 at the vertex. And it looks something like that. A sketch here is fine, I'm just trying to get an idea of the overall behavior. How do I see what's going on? Well, let's look at the phase line at zero to tell us what's going on here. If I look at zero and I go back to my equation, I will have just y times 20 minus y. So if I plug in, say, 10, I get 10 times 10 is positive. So know that we are positive in this region here. 
If I plug in 30, it's negative. If I plug in the negative number, it's also negative. So that's a setup there, which means I know that in this middle region, the function is positive, and so the graph will be increasing. And outside, it'll be negative, so it'll be decreasing. And this also includes everything over here to the right because it's outside in the same region of that graph. You also check values too. If you plug in, say, alpha equals 200, that'll be negative no matter what value of y you plug in. So it's always decreasing. So there's our bifurcation diagram for this equation. And we notice something happens at alpha equals 100. This here, something changes. Right? The phase line goes from having two solutions on this parabola to having none. And that sort of a change is what's called the bifurcation point. And the definition that we something like a value of alpha at which the qualitative behavior of the solutions change. And what do we mean by qualitative behavior? That's things like number of equilibrium solutions or stability of these solutions. In this case, we see a bifurcation point at alpha equals 100 where I go from two equilibrium solutions down to zero. And the important thing for physical modeling here, right, if I'm harvesting too fast, the entire population dies off. And we see that from this setup here. If alpha is too big of harvesting too quickly, it all goes away, just goes to zero. For the setup before, we saw that zero was a bifurcation point, And that's because the solution at y equals zero changes in stability at that point. It goes from being unstable for alpha less than zero to stable for alpha bigger than zero. So that's a bifurcation point, as is the one with logistic growth, where we lose both solutions to get to nothing. There are several other examples of bifurcations out there, um, but these are two of the main ones that you could see coming up from these sorts of equations where you have an autonomous differential equation with a parameter, and you want to see how changing that parameter affects the overall development of the solutions to this equation.